Chapter 27 Scout dreaded driving out to the middle of nowhere at night, so she decided to go in while the sun was still up. Taylor sat next to her, staring out at the surrounding woods, biting her nails. I really don't feel right about dragging you into this, Scout said. You could get hurt. Taylor looked at her. That's sweet. I can take care of myself, though. What if there's more than one bad guy? Like in your favorite horror movie? Then we'll handle it together. She grabbed Scout's hand and squeezed. It was reassuring and managed to ease her fears a little. Scout drove down the familiar highway and then turned right onto a long road. The houses along this road were so far apart, the occupants could barely be called neighbors. Scout cursed herself for breaking her rule about going to an isolated location with a killer on the loose. She felt for her cell phone in her pocket just to make sure it was still there. She found Duke's house on the left, along with three cars parked in the front yard. She recognized two of them. Looks like a party, Taylor said. I feel a lot better now. I don't. Scout turned off her car and got out. Why were there so many people here? She and Taylor walked onto the wraparound porch and knocked on the front door. Hey, Duke greeted, standing aside to let them in. You brought a guest? he asked Scout. I'm not the only one. She saw Seth and Amanda with scripts in their hands. What the fuck are they doing here? The shooting was supposed to be a ruse, remember? Duke shrugged. I figured we could get some shooting out of the way. It's the finale, after all. Jaron came from upstairs and stared at Taylor. What's she doing here? She wants to see the killer caught, Scout told him. To Seth and Amanda, she said, You guys shouldn't be here. Why? Amanda asked. What's going on? I thought we were shooting the final scenes. We are, Duke said. No, we're not, Scout added. We're trying to trick the killer here tonight so we can catch him and turn him into the police. Killer, Seth said, screwing up his face in confusion. What killer? Who died? My ex-girlfriend, Taylor said quietly. The guy who's been trying to ruin your movie for weeks killed her last night. Don't you watch the news? No, he replied. Oh, my God, Amanda said, swishing her neck with every word. The killer's coming here? Tonight? What the fuck? She grabbed her purse and headed for the front door. Seth was right behind her. Where are you going? Duke asked, following them. Scout looked out the open door, past the bug screen that acted as a window for the porch. The sun was setting. Duke came back inside and stared daggers at Taylor. We're better off, Jaron told him. They had no right to be here, and neither do you two. He directed that at Scout and Taylor. No right, Taylor asked. This fucker killed someone I loved. Did he kill someone you love? Jaron dropped his eyes to the floor. I'm not leaving until we catch him, she finished. Jaron nodded, looking at Duke. All right, Duke said, holding up his hands. I think we should establish some ground rules in order to avoid any shenanigans. First, no wandering around the house by yourself. If you disappear from the group, you're automatically the killer. Secondly... Don't trust any dead bodies. Unless we see someone die, they're most likely the killer faking their death to avoid further suspicion. I've never trusted off-screen deaths, and I never will. And thirdly, if you don't have a fully charged cell phone, you can't be a part of this. Is everyone's cell phone charged? Taylor and Scout pulled theirs out and checked. Mine is halfway charged, Taylor said. Then you're out, Duke replied. Seriously? Of course not. You're good. Taylor grinned. Next up are weapons, Duke went on. 
I have a gun. There are knives in the kitchen. Jaron is using a baseball bat, so you girls can go for whatever you want. I highly suggest the knives. Come on. Scout tugged Taylor's sleeve toward the kitchen. Scout grabbed a butcher knife from the rack, and Taylor grabbed two steak knives from a drawer by the sink. Those tiny things? Scout asked. Taylor held the knives, blades down, and slashed into the air with one and then the other. It feels comfortable. Shenanigans, ladies, Duke called from the living room. Get your tushies back in here. They rejoined the group. Jaron was staring through a window that looked out onto the front yard and road. See anything? Duke asked him. Yeah, the killer's standing by your car. What? No, asshole. If I saw something, I would tell you. Taylor laughed. I like him. Scout nudged her shoulder and said in a sing-song voice, Taylor likes a douchebag. Hey, Jaron said as he grabbed his bat from behind a recliner. I'm not a douchebag. Focus, people, Duke said nervously. We're expecting a homicidal maniac. Dude, we're prepared, Scout said. Where's your weapon? Shit, it's upstairs. I'll get it. Duke headed for the stairs. Shenanigans, Taylor declared. Duke froze midway up. You're right. Come with me then. Jaron waved him off. We trust you. Just hurry. Duke ran upstairs and disappeared. Scout grew nervous for some reason. Duke's rules were good ones, and now he was violating the first one. Though she'd known him for years, she didn't trust him completely. I really think you guys should go, Jaron said to the girls. Why? Taylor asked. I just don't think you should be here. Whoever's doing this clearly has a grudge with Duke. He killed Gina, Taylor said. Maybe he didn't mean to. Scout couldn't believe what she was hearing. Are you defending him? Not at all. I'm just saying that if he wanted us dead, he would have done it a long time ago. Scout thought about it. He didn't kill Mr. Anderson, she said quietly. Who's Mr. Anderson? Taylor asked. My manager. He was there last night when... When Gina was killed? Scout nodded. Why kill her, but not a grown man? But he had a knife. Maybe he wanted to scare you, Jaron said to Scout. Well, it worked, she replied. Then why did he kill... her? Taylor turned away, furiously wiping her eyes. Scout thought she knew why, but she didn't want to say in front of Taylor. The memory of Gina's paralyzed body lying in the parking lot came to her. Maybe the zombie thought he was doing her a favor by killing her. Duke suddenly ran downstairs into the kitchen, where he grabbed a knife. Then he ran in front of Taylor and Scout, pointing the knife at Jaron. You son of a bitch! What the fuck, Duke? Scout asked. Jaron's the killer. What are you talking about? My gun, he told her, is missing. <laughs>